Good day everyone. Once again, I welcome you to my YouTube channel. In this particular video, we're working on chemistry or some selected meta and non meta. But in this video, I won't really go deep. I will just give you a general overview of uh, the position of metals in the periodic table, position of non metals position of metalloid and the rest. So this is an introductory video to chemistry of some selected metals and non metals So first of all, if you look at this, this is our periodic table. We have the first, from here to here, is the first 30 element, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36. So we have element 1 to 36. So we have 36 element in my periodic table. So how do we identify metals in the periodic table? Now, group 1 element and group 2 element, they are majorly metals. Majorly, they are metals. We call them metals. I'm talking about this group one element here, or group one element, or group two element, they are usually metals. Then from group three down to group 12, we call them the transition element. I've mentioned that before. So group one and group two, they are majorly metals, which is the S block in the priority book. Why the P block, which is from group three to group what? To group 12, we call them the transition element or the transition metals. And these transition metals, uh, like what I explained in my other video, they are found in the D block in the periodic table and they transit between the S block and the P block. So these are the transition elements. So let's now, identify the non metals. The non metals are from basically they are group 17 and group 18. They are non metal, but not just group 17 and group 18. But all group 17 elements and all group 18 elements, they are what? non meta So let's confirm the metalloid so we can draw a gap. Boron here is a metalloid. Silicon here is a metalloid. Now, if you come to this place here, arsenic here is a metalloid. Gallium here is also a metalloid. So for this one, you are going to have something like this. Now, when you get here, this one will still keep on moving like this. It will still keep on moving like this. But as long as you have got to, to this is period one, period two, period three. If you get to period four in the periodic table, this line that I drew, this, this line that I'm drawing now, is going to continue like this. The element at the top of this line is usually a non meter I repeat, the element that is at the top of this line Usually, no a metalloid rather. So this one is a metalloid. This one is a metalloid. The element that will be found here is a metalloid. The element that will be found here is a metalloid. So this is where it ends. Group five, group six, and here is group seven. So that's how it ends. Here is fluorine, chlorine, bromine, uh, krypton. Then here will be what? Sorry, fluorine, bromine, fluorine, chlorine, bromine, iodine. Then here will be astatine. Astatine. So we also consider astatine as a what? As a metalloid, not as a non metal So there's another element that will be here. There's another element that will be another element. So, but how can we even know that this particular element here is a non metal or a metalloid? So I have one, I have two. When you get to this place here, which is period four in the periodic table, period one, no metalloid, period two, boron, period three, silicon. Period four in the periodic table, we are now working with this line back at front. The one that is back of this line is a metalloid. The one in front of is a metalloid, 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 metalloid. So that's we are going to have one metalloid here. One, two, three, four. Here is five, here is six, here is seven, and here is eight. So in the periodic table, we have eight metalloid. Eight metalloid. So, why the other element in this other side and the bottom of the periodic table, we already know that from here to this side, they are non metal So, every other element in this other part of the periodic table, apart from this 8, so 8 minus all the elements you have here, they are non metal Why the other, other elements you have from here down to this side, they are metal We call these two major metals. Why these ones here? We call them the transition word element. And at the bottom of the periodic table, you are going to see another one again. We call them the inner transition element, which are the rare earth element or the what? The artificial element. So this is how to identify the metals, the non-metals, and the metalloid. Elements that are found in the middle of the periodic table, 
which is boron silicon uh, germanium uh, astatine as uh, arsenic rather down to astatine and the elements you have here all of them we call them what N uh, metalloid why the one we have here they are what they are non-metal so let's check for some of the characteristics of the metals we have already talked about the position so for the characteristics number one we have here they have high metal point and boiling point most cases group one element group two in fact all metals generally they have high metal point and high boiling point except for a particular metal that is called mercury mercury is liquid at room temperature and it has a low boiling point a whole metal point rather so mercury is a metal but at room temperature it is what it is liquid and it doesn't obey this rule here i said metals they have high melting point and a high boiling point but mercury doesn't even sodium and potassium it doesn't they they are light they are soft and they have a low boiling point or like other metals that have high boiling point so look at the element now mercury has a low a low melting point sodium and potassium they have a low boiling point sodium and potassium as well they are light sodium and potassium as well they are what they are soft which doesn't fit in into this category but look at sodium here look at uh, potassium here they are still metal the other one again they are they have a characteristic luster what luster what i mean by this is that they shine if you have seen if you look at the reflect light let me use that the reflect light now if you point if the sun should if, if 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 the rays of the sun should hit this wood or if you point a torch to a wood it's not going to ref reflect the light what i mean by reflection is that it's not going to hit the wood then come out like this it will just absorb the light light will just be there but if you place zinc or silver let me use something that's very common if you use silver if you place a silver in the sun or zinc anything at all before you know if you point a torch there or maybe at night you point the torch you're going to see the reflection of the light in the other side so you're trying to say all metals they reflect light then the other one is that they are malleable they are malleable which is they can be beaten into shape you can beat a particular metal into another shape or like non-metal you can convert one metal to another you can convert the shape of metal it can be beaten into different shape then the next one we have here they are ductile which is drawn into wires we have the next one they have a tensile straight a hard one a strong one tensile straight then the last one which is even the first one they are good conductor of heat and electricity all metal all metals in the periodic table they are good conductor of heat and electricity so this is even the major characteristics of what of metal but there is a non-metal that behaves as a metal that has the ability to conduct electricity and which element is that carbon we already know that carbon exists in two allotropic form we have uh, the crystalline carbon and we have the non crystalline carbon under the crystalline carbon you already know the two we have there we have uh, a diamond then the next one we have there is what is a graphite the hardest substance known to man is diamond but this graphite you are seeing here has the ability to conduct what electricity so the only metal that behaves like a the only non-metal that has an allotrope that behaves like a metal is called what carbon and the allotrope that behaves like metal is what is graphite because graphite actually conducts electricity because graphite has what you call mobile electron it has what you call mobile electron that's one of the reasons graphite has the ability to conduct what electricity so let's quickly talk about the metallic property and the bonding please take note for all metals, all metals, the kind of bond they undergo is called electrovalent. Electrovalent bond. The other word for electrovalent bond is ionic. An ionic bond, this will transfer of electron. Remember, metals have electron in the atmosphere, so there is a tendency that they can give that electron to the non-metal. Then, when they lose their electron, they become ions. So, and when ions react, when uh, a cation reacts with an anion, the bond that will be formed is called ionic what? bond. So that's why uh, uh, metals form ionic bond. 
or we call it electrovalent what bonding. But for non-metal, they always they are bonded covalently. All non-metals, the bond you see there is what is a covalent bond. But for metals, the bond you see there is what is electrovalent or ionic bond. The another question that you likely see in your exam is the metallic property. So, how is the metallic property like? From the metallic property, as you are moving from left to right, it decreases. And if you are moving from top to bottom, it does what? Increases. So that's to say, the element at the bottom part of the periodic table has a higher metallic property than the element at the top of the periodic table. And the element in the left-hand side of the periodic table has a higher metallic property than the element in this side of the periodic table. So if someone should answer your question, Zinc and gallium, which of them have a higher metallic property? Following this trend, it decreases. And if you are decreasing, that means zinc has a higher metallic property compared to what? To gallium. What about lithium and potassium? Which of them has a higher metallic property? The answer is what? Potassium. Because as you are going down, it does what? It increases. So for metallic property in the periodic table, increases down the group and decreases across the period. So it follows the, the electropositivity. Electropositivity. So the most electropositive element has the highest metallic property. And the most electronegative ele uh, 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 element has the lowest metallic property. Therefore, I can easily say the higher the electropositivity, the higher the metallic property. The lower the electropositivity, the lower the what? The metallic property, as easy as that. So if you have any questions based on everything I've explained so far, please feel free to drop that in the comment section. I will definitely attend to it. And please don't just watch the video without sharing to others. Don't watch this video without sharing to others. If you have any friend that is going through some stuff related to chemistry of some selected metals and non-metal, please do where to forward this video to him or her. Thanks for watching. Like what I said earlier, if you have any question regarding what I've said, please feel free to drop that in the comment section. And I have an assignment for you. How many metallic, sorry, how many metalloid? How many metalloid do we have in the periodic table? Like what I said, the other word for metalloid is what? Is semi-metal. So how many semi-metals do we have in the periodic table? That's question one. Then question two. List five out of the number you have there. There are more than five actually. So list five out of the one you have there. Thanks for watching. See you when we see you again.